<laughs> pretty good final. Um, I kind of felt it was inevitable that France were going to win. You could just see they had a little bit more quality than Croatia, unfortunately, because I would have loved to have seen the upset. I think both you and me, Jesse, we went into the game saying, oh, we don't really care who wins. We just want we just want an even game. And then when Croatia scored their first goal, we were both just like, ah! That's a good point, actually, yeah. <laughs> Um, what did you think? There's a bit of controversial. Um, there's, sorry, there's a bit of controversy in the media in Australia at the moment about the whole VAR um, I- influence on the game. We saw like a controversial penalty awarded. There's a lot of people hitting out at that. I, I, it's hard to tell whether they really believe that the penalty shouldn't be awarded or if they were just a bit sour that the underdog lost the way they did. But yeah, what I, were thought, your, what were I your thought it was a blatant penalty. So I thought, to be honest, the VAR worked perfectly. Yeah. For that. That's yeah. what it's there for because they were undecided. The ref didn't see it, could go back, video review it, and give the penalty. That's like exactly what it's there for, and I think it was used perfect. Fair enough. I think Peter Schmeichel was the one who came out in the media in particular and went on a bit of a rant saying that uh, it wasn't an obvious enough penalty to be awarded. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, the difference when is I go by the rules right. is if you have your body close, your hand, sorry, close to your body, like this or like this, and it hits your arm then it's deemed unintentional. But if you're holding your arm out there, even if you don't intentionally hit the ball, just the act of holding your arm out, I think you need to be responsible. And I think, to be honest, the general consensus was that it was a penalty. Fair enough. The The free kick just before it was a little bit unlucky too, wasn't it? The one that yeah, resulted that, in... Yeah, that Griezmann. was the one that I was actually a bit 50-50 on. I thought that um, the French player Griezmann went down very easily. Um, so but, I mean, to be... F- to be fair to the French, um, you know, a set piece is not a guaranteed thing at all. That's true. And the the delivery from Griezmann was top notch and, yeah, pretty forced one of the Croatians, Mandusic, to put a header on it and unfortunately he just smacked it into his own goal. Croatia were very gallant though. They did yeah. not dominate, but they were on top for a large portion of the game, especially when, uh, when the score was level and even when France sort of hit the front, Croatia were well and truly, um, you know, forcing the ball up. And, and, yeah, I think they had quite a few more shots in the end than, than yeah. France. I mean, obviously, France's shots were uh, quite a bit more lethal. Um, Mbappe and Pogba had two great finishes, and they yeah. just took their chances. And at the end of the day, that's that's the difference between... It is. The champions I mean, it's the a bit of a quality versus quantity argument, yeah. I think, with, um, with this one, I think. And at the end of the day... Unfortunately, France did just have that quality up front that Croatia didn't have. I think two of the goals, the, the Pogba goal and the Mbappe goal, I think were both pretty quality. And there's not too many players in the world that could score that. But uh, the Croatians, like you said, they played really gallantly. I thought Rakitic and Modric were probably the best two players on the ground, personally. I was um, going to say, from like from seeing what I've seen on the outside, you'd say French won the cup, obviously, but Croatia won people's hearts from what I've seen. Yeah. They seem to be like the one people, everyone's like, yeah, Croatia. Like, no, every, <laughs> they've won the hearts of the people. Every, everyone loves an underdog, don't they? There's quite a lot of Croatian Australians as yeah. well, which I think... Yeah, yeah I know a few that. people that were heavily invested in the game. Actually, I saw the um, one of the SBS hosts, um, not Craig Foster. the uh, Not Lee Lin. The, no, it wasn't Lee Lin. She was, broke down in tears before the game because... Her family is Croatian, and she was just talking about how proud she was. Oh. So, I mean, yeah. That's pretty cool. They, what they have yeah. achieved is pretty imp- uh, impressive, considering their population. How It is. You know, they, they were one country that split into seven, and then they made the World Cup final. It's almost, it's not quite Leicester-like in the Premier League, but yeah. it's, it's the World Cup equivalent. Especially because in every game in the knockout stages, they were down by a goal first, and then they came back and won apart from the final. Huh. Yeah, they uh, 100% deserved to be where they were um, in the final, yeah. to be honest. I thought they were maybe not the second best team. I thought Belgium were unlucky that they faced France in the semi, but that's just my personal opinion. But it, they were certainly up there with the best teams in this tournament, Croatia. I mean, I, th- I, think, I, think, they were, I think they were the second best team, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, I think um, they lost 4-2. They really pushed, pushed France. Um, so you sort of have to give them... <laughs> Give them, um, butchered that a bit. you got to give them credit, I think. And give, of course. Definitely give them the runners-up yeah. title. Well, they did get the runners-up title. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> talking about stripping their runners-up. Or... <laughs> no, fair enough. Yeah. But right. we, uh, we also had footy. Keep yeah. on rolling on. 
which was also lovely. I, I just love it when there's so many different sports on and you can just watch AFL and then just like switch it over literally five minutes later and watch another sport. I think my girlfriend is going to kill me. <laughs> Every NBA free agency has been going off at the moment, which I've been loving. Okay. Yeah. There's no clash between those three sports, which was it's great. It's sad that the World Cup's now over because the footy would obviously be on during the day in Australia yeah. and then the World Cup would be on it like later at night. So yeah. it was just an endless stream of, of yeah. good times. Right. Sporting goodness. So on the weekend, had a few big games, um, a few big upsets. Brisbane now is at three, three in a row and... Yep. Currently the the longest run of any team in the AFL, I think you're about to say. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say they currently are the best winning streak. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the fr- Eagles have the longest run. Okay. Ten. Um, Fremantle, so not out there. Fremantle upset Port Adelaide, which right. I guess we were pretty happy about. Yeah, pretty was, gutsy win from Fremantle. Pretty but- yeah. butchery game, but yeah, um, it's always good to get the four points. Definitely. Even with, especially without Fife and Sandy. Yeah. Even though Sean Darcy, uh, at this point, even if Sandy does want to play another year, You've got to play both of them. Sean Darcy's been um, yeah, exceptional, hasn't he? Yeah. As, like, Has his news about his injury come out? No, I don't, I don't think they've given... I haven't said anything? Yeah, given too much time. Anything. They must be doing testing, I think, mm. yeah. tomorrow. And today. I wonder if that's a good sign. Maybe he's not injured. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. No, I think he... He did look in a bad way when he yeah. came off. Yeah. They were talking in the post-game about him spending time out. About, okay. Uh-huh. Which, I mean, they usually get it fairly spot on. True. Uh, uh-huh. yeah. But um, speaking of injury tra- tragedy, boys, I think, unfortunately, the biggest story out of the weekend is probably a pretty sad one. Uh, obviously, Nick Natanui doing his second ACL for, well, the last, well second ACL after 15 games. Uh, it, it's, it's a real tough one for him because he's gone through a lot. And I, for I really you feel for and him. Eagles fans. Yeah, yeah I, honestly... You might not believe me when I say this, but I think I'm more sad for him than I am for the team. Yeah. Considering yeah, what he's gone I'm through. I'm sad for him. Because like, I'd never be sad for the Eagles. I'm a Dockers <laughs> fan, realistically. But I'm sad for Nick Nat. He seems like a real good fella. Yeah. I don't think anyone... I, like, I've never heard anyone in the media say any, or uh, other players from other clubs say anything bad about him. They've only got nice things to say. and He's, he's been through a lot. He lost his mother right before... Do, well, yeah, a year before doing the last ACL. And then, uh, obviously, yeah, back-to-back ACLs now... It's been a tough three years for him. Definitely, I, wo- I worry about him. Yeah, this might be a controversial call, but I'm 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 not convinced he will come back. I've heard a few people say that. That's it's not lonely for a few people have had that thought for sure. I'd probably count myself closer to that category than the coming back, even though I'm undecided. Uh, I think he'll come back personally. I Hopefully. think he'll come back and he'll play, and he'll be. I think What's he'll his be good. Contract situation. End of next year, he okay. Up. Yeah, I don't think the Eagles would let him go though if he wanted to continue. Surely they'd no. be able to keep him for cheap at that point as well. It'd be another yeah. factor, as much as it like, which sucks for him again because if he'd kept playing, kept playing well, he would have got another big contract. But I, I, I'm actually um, a bit different to you guys in that I actually, I hate it from the fans' perspective, for the Eagles fans' perspective. Like, if if Fremantle play West Coast. Um, I always hate this thing where people get glad if like one of the West Coast or Freo important players are going to miss because they think it's more likely Their that team. you'll beat the team. Yeah. But for me, you always want to beat the opposition when they've got their best 22 out there. That's when you can yeah. really say, yeah, we beat you That's true. today. We were better yeah. than you. No excuses. Um, so I think from the fans' point of view, it really sucks. And he is the marquee player. Even if he's not the best player, he definitely is. He's like the he's team a barometer mascot. player. He he's is the a guy player. that the guy that all the players get around, all the club get around. The club's really built around him. He like um, he'd be the Ben Cousins in two thousand six, like the Prince of Perth, like yeah, like, face, like he's not like doing the stuff Ben Cousins <laughs> did, obviously, but <laughs> he's that the, sort of he's the, cachet and personality. Yeah, I mean that I mean, Fife is the same at yeah, Freo, exactly. like you always every club has that marquee player you know whether it be Dane Swan Michael Voss yeah. um, Nick Rewalt the franchise and he was definitely that player Yeah. but like I said I think he will come back I think he's got really strong determination and willpower I see all the time actually on his Instagram he's following his um, posts like inspirational bible quotes mm-hmm. and stuff and I think he's a really like strong believer in like 
um, going through like a journey to like yeah. get to some place and like battling through hard times. Yeah, and a fan of the journey rather than the result sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. I think um, well, I think he's a believer that the journey is hard yeah. work, and exactly. that you've got to go through hard times to have good times. Yeah, he seems exactly. quite a spiritual person. Uh, in yeah. That sense. The, what he has going for them with this injury is my understanding is that there's no other ligament damage other than the ACL. He's just, it. just yeah. ruptured it. And I think last time he had like loose bone chips and stuff when, yeah. and I think his other knee had ligament damage. So yeah. Yeah. Th- that was really Because he's done the opposite knee this time. He has. Yeah. Um, so what do you, that might mean if he does come back 100%, then he could be right to go this time next year. Hopefully. Yeah. My, my concern when I was worried about his career would be more the mental side of it. I don't think he's going to have trouble recovering physically. It's just, like, I can only imagine what people with an ACL injury go through. Like, it's not even yeah. just the fact you can't play footy. Like, their short-term life is, the quality of life is quite diminished and they're just, like, yeah. on crutches everywhere in, in, in some pain. And I don't know. Fingers crossed he comes back. I, yeah. I liken his influence on the game to Cyril Rioli's, where... The numbers don't really show his impact, but he he can get the ball 12 times a game and he often wins the ball in like a critical moment in the game and he can win matches off his own boots, similar to Rioli. Um, and yeah, we've obviously just yeah. lost Sue Rioli to retirement as well. So I've got a little side, because I was, what, before you guys came over, I was watching on the couch, they made an interesting side point. Now you, it makes your free agency a lot more interesting because now you're going to have to pay Scott Lysett as well as the other guys you've got coming up that is true that makes him less expendable in free agency now when you're gonna have to spend money to keep gov and i think gov. we'll keep them all anyway though i ex- i think if one was going to go it would be like just because of the fact he seems like he's really keen to uh, Get be the number own, one yeah. man but to be honest i'm not sure i'm still not 100 percent sure if he went to geelong or something if he'd be big enough to be um like a number one ruck in a key team He's a number one ruck, but he's not a top ruck. Yeah. He'd be I think like he has a, a lot of potential. He's not an elite ruck as such, but I think when he's had a good continuity yeah. of form, he's been very, very good. Yeah. yeah. Did you mean physically big? No, no. I, I more just mean just, just like number one. Right. Def- he's a number one ruck. Ruckman, ruckman. I'd say, but he's not a Brody, Grundy, Max type. No, Thorn he's not. Type. No, no he's not. Type. no he's those, those are two ruckman. of some of the best exactly. rucks of this generation. He'd be like a mid-tier number one ruck. i got to say... Brody Grundy has impressed me so much this year. Every yeah. time I watch Collingwood, I think, man, he is a really good player, Brody Grundy. Yeah. I feel like there's more of a focus on rucks these days, in the, especially in the media, the way they... Uh, I think we might just almost have another golden generation of rucks at the moment. You have yeah. Max Gorn as one of the Brownlow favourites. Brody Grundy's, Grun, Grundy <laughs> has been talked about uh, almost at the same level. Yeah. Stefan Martin is doing great things up at Brisbane. Yeah. Obviously, we know that profile Nick has. Sanderlade's probably... The, he's had a steady year until yeah, he yeah. went down. I mean, he's 35 now. Yeah. But, you know, there's some very good rucks in the game. I don't think I remember seeing, remember seeing such a strong ruckman landscape, if that's, yeah. <laughs> that's the way... Uh, Evan Goldstein's right. still plugging along. He's still decent. Yeah. Stefan Martin. Well, we mentioned him. I'm going to... Um, Call a bit of a have a bit of a shot here. I can't remember who said it though, but I remember at the start of the year I disagreed um, when people were saying the ruck was dying. And um, they also said that about key forwards, which was really stupid. It's evolved. It hasn't Um, died. It's evolved. And I think this year more than ever is a hundred percent proved that that that's completely false. Like rucks, good rucks are having such a big impact on the game right now as much as. Ever, I think the roles changed a bit though. They've become almost an extra mid. Like they have, yeah. yeah. I think every, I think like, almost be every role has become now. an extra mid. Yeah. Every, the, it's almost like the midfield now is just yeah. one system, and they want as many players as they can to rotate into that system. So yeah. all the half forwards, all the half backs need to be yeah. able to come into the midfield, and the midfielders, a lot of them need to be able to play half yeah. back, half forward as well. So it's a it's a massive rotation thing. Yeah. I think that's because. If you're rotating players, you can have a player in there for 10 minutes who can just run his guts out at 100% and then play him at like half forward, rest up a bit. Then the player that was on half forward can come in and run at 100%. So you, your midfield is operating at like 100% capacity for a large amount of the game rather than if you're just playing the same four guys in there for the whole game. 
there's no that even if they're the most fit guys, they're going to be pretty spent by the time it hits the fourth quarter. They're talking about reducing interchange even more. So I think that you're right. The, you need more players who can rotate through there, and I guess you also need midfielders who can rotate somewhere else. Someone who can rest forward and still have an impact. We see that's of, big this year. The resting for like Zabel. Was yeah, a big one. Dangerfield, Ablett, Dusty, exactly. uh, Fife, I guess, does yeah. as well. Um, so, yeah, I, I, it just shows how much versatility is important. And we kind of got on a tangent yeah. there. But, um, yes, the Rucks, I think, like, I think we had a stage for a while, about three or four years ago, where there just weren't that many good Rucks. And I think that started this perception that Rucks aren't that important. Yeah, I agree. And I remember people were playing pre- uh, paying premiums to trade Rucks from other clubs. And now that's probably not as much the case now because you've got so many elite rucks in the game yeah. and yeah as we talked about the key forward thing was pretty stupid they're talking about one week they're saying the key forward's dead because Jack Rewalt plays as a sole key forward for Richmond the next minute they're saying Ben Brown and it's like an absolute sensation which yeah. he's a fantastic player Tom Lynch is going to be one of the most well played uh, well paid players in the game and part of West Coast's research this year has been on the back of their form of two key forwards I mean Buddy Franklin is possibly the, one of the greatest players of all time. He's still playing. You can't say the key no. forward's dead <laughs> yeah. when arguably the best key forward ever is still playing and still dominating. Yeah. It's fair to say that these positions are evolving. And you can't teach that size. Like it's No matter how skilled and structures and stuff, you can't teach someone to be that size and just take a grab when you need them to. It's still an important skill to have. Speaking of being that size and that new he's ACL... Um, I want. I still wonder often if if players that size are supposed to be as bulked up as much as they are, and I think a lot of players um, we're seeing can have as big an impact without having the bulk, um, and I think maybe muscle mass might be a little bit overrated at the moment in, yeah. some, in yeah. some players. I think big guys are getting bulked up too much. That's why, as well, I think you've seen a massive surgence of these sorts of ACL and muscle type injuries in the last like 15 years of AFL. I mean, an ACL was actually a quite rare injury 20 years ago. Um, Mind you, players are probably lighter than they were. They're, they're bigger, but because they're not, they're, they're more cut than they were in say the eighties and nineties. Okay. Well, it's maybe it's, it's, it's less of a natural form possibly. They're more finely tuned. So. They're a lot more finely tuned. I mean, when you train, I think every day, maybe five days a week, then you play a game on your weekend, like your body is just, is so highly tuned. It's certainly um, under more duress, and so, I'd say. And so highly strung yeah. that I think it's a lot easier for something just to go slightly wrong. One thing I did find curious, and I'm not playing uh, placing any blame on West Coast for this because I'm probably wrong, but one thing I did find curious was when Nick Nat came back from his ACL injury, he was actually much thicker than he was before and surely heavier. And yeah. He didn't look very lean at all. And, and I think maybe they were trying to strengthen his legs, but it was just weird. I would have thought you'd want to take as much stress off the knee, especially when he's a player that relies a bit on his athleticism. I have to think that's a lot of maybe the player actually almost getting bored wants to do something you can't run around a track can't kick the footy when you got an ACL the only thing you can do is maybe sit under like a bench press machine um, and do things like that and um, I think that that would definitely come into it but I think you're also right Um, the the coaches and the fitness staff have a responsibility to really make sure that the player yeah, can will try not to do an injury again. Mm. Mm. I'm sure they. I'm sure it wasn't negligence that that led to like him being bigger. I'm sure it was deliberate. They'd probably just want to get him as much leg strength as possible. That was probably yeah. the logic. But I mean, does he? Ha- why does he have to be bigger? He's already as strong as any ruckman <laughs> yeah. in the competition. Can only jump over any competition. Yeah. I don't really see the value in just packing on an extra like ten kilos of muscle. Yeah, I I agree. Yeah, yeah it's strange. Well, on that note, sorry, were you going to say something? No. Ah, um, <laughs> you took a breath, I was first <laughs> um, The question that's in the media a lot at the moment as a result of this injury is, are the Eagles still a contender without him? A hundred percent. Really? Anyone that says they're not has not watched much of the Eagles this year. Okay. Nat Nui's probably had two, three, four games where I'd say he's had a real impact on the game, but... West Coast have performed really well without Nat Nui. I, I don't. Th- I think he has less of an impact than what people have been thinking this year. And I think um, with a few of the other rucks coming in, 
I think I think they'll be all right. I think if Elisa gets injured, then they should start to be maybe a little worried. Mm. Um, They're lucky having Lysetta's coverage, for sure. Um, I think the difference is... Sorry, the difference is between us and last time... Uh, us being West Coast. The difference between West Coast last time and now is A, they've got a Lyset fit because Lyset didn't play last yeah. last time. And they've pretty much uncovered two midfielders that we that they didn't have last time, which is Elliot Yo and Jack Redden. And that's that's helped a lot in the clearance stakes. We used to get absolutely obliterated in clearances without Nat Nui because we couldn't either hit out yeah, to advantage. Clark. The clearances he wins himself for as well. Um, and you know, the proof was in the pudding somewhat where we actually blitzed Collingwood more when he went down. <laughs> it was much more of a spread. That's what I've noticed about the Eagles this year. Much more yeah, of a spread tr- and less reliance yeah. on um, individual players. Yeah. Um, and spread, uh, yeah, in, the, in a different sense is uh, I think they're actually... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I should have phrased that better. A spread in a different sense in their, their ability to play wide has improved. Yeah. No. Uh, around the wider ground, because obviously Optus Stadium, I think it's starting to have effect. They were pretty poor in round five against Carlton. They only won that game by 10 points. And against a team that was admittedly playing very defensively, but the difference between this performance and, again, uh, yeah, the performance against Carlton and this one on the weekend was, was stark. I think they might be starting to adapt a bit better. I think with the nickname point as well, like t- teams can depend on that play, but when they're not there, guys step up like... Even like this is an entirely different thing, but like social basketball, when our big guy shows up, everyone just like, yeah, he'll get all the rebounds. So we get our rebounding goes to shit. Yeah. Or like, mm. but when I, he doesn't play, everyone does the right thing. And, yeah. And, I saw that with the Celtics this year. Like two main two main guys go down. Uh, <laughs> is it Gordon Hayward? Hayward went down he, first play first. Everyone game of the everyone was sort of saying that they were done, and they yeah. still were. Very, very close to making the... They had two the very talented team. young kids who got more of a crack because of that. Yeah. Though, which Last time Nat Nui went down, West Coast blitzed Adelaide in Adelaide the following week. And now I think about it, Fremantle's probably arguably their two best wins this year have both when Fife and Sandy have missed. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you could say that they didn't necessarily play well on Sunday yeah. against Port Adelaide. I understand it wasn't a great game, but... It was a good uh, win. I think, I think it's it more like game. the mindset changes where you, you your players stand up to take more yeah. of the slack and they, you could have gone the other way yeah. they could have gotten blitzed by port but they didn't they, yeah. they, yeah. they were the better team yeah um, another thing that's been talked about in the media a lot lately boys is this talk of Carlton and the priority pick oh. so <laughs> I do want to get your yeah. thoughts on it I think you can tell what my thoughts are from that um, yeah. yeah I'm so so against it like I'll first, I'll, sorry, I'll explain the priority pick for those watching who don't okay. necessarily get into the draft as much. But the priority pick essentially is, um, in addition to a club's draft picks, if they are deemed to have performed really badly or are in need of an extra first round draft pick, the AFL can make a decision based on an application to award them the priority pick. It used to be that if you had under four wins for the year, you'd automatically get an extra draft pick. And if you did it two years in a row, you got... Um, another draft pick at the start of the draft. So you'd yeah. get essentially pick one. So what the what has been going on in the media lately is that people have responded to Carlton suggesting they're not even going to apply for a draft pick this year, or, or apply for a priority pick this year. And a lot of people are going, like, what the hell are you doing? That's really weird. They think it's out of pride. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that bloody hurt, actually. <laughs> I just killed the conversation. Oh, Absolutely oh, dead. Yeah. Um, well, we're talking about current priority. Oh, you look like you're in a lot of pain. It actually hurts yeah, like a bugger. Should we stop? stop? No, we're good. <laughs> I've been recoup. Um, so at the end of that, yeah. What, what, what are your thoughts on Carlton? First of all, rejecting the pick. Do you think they should have done it? Um. Nothing's official yet. I no, think... they shouldn't reject the pick. If I was Carlton, I'd, I'd go for the pick. But in saying that, I don't think it's fair to get the pick. Okay, why is that? Because I just... I I don't know. I, I think, for one, it's proven that the priority pick doesn't actually, doesn't actually change much. Um, so look at all the clubs that have got priority picks. Um, and I think you could strongly argue that that priority 
having that priority pick didn't really have much of an effect on that team. It, it didn't make them I guess any it, better. It can do. It's the, about the potential of it. I think that's yeah. more like you got. It's just an extra opportunity. I just don't think it's fair. That's fair my main yeah. my main gripe with it. Okay. Yeah, they're already going to get the number one pick for being the worst team in the league. That's pretty yeah. sort of. If sufficient. you can't get a good player with the number one pick, then that's your fault. Especially with a talent like Lukosius floating around this year. So yeah, so the. Damn, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, what about you? Completely lost. What do you think? <laughs> should they get? Should they? Should they get a priority pick? No, I don't think they should. I think well, the, the way the system is set up right now is that the, it's an application. So the AFL can consider you based on how badly your team is doing. Yep. So I, in my opinion, they would probably get rejected if they were offered one. Uh, mm-hmm. Sorry, if they applied. Yeah. Yep. I don't think they're at the stage where they need it. I think Gold Coast need it more, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. And that's, for a, in worse that's for a variety so. of factors. Um, the fact that they can't hold on to their youth is a massive part of it. The fact they're probably going to lose Tom Lynch. Yeah, that's true. Um, but I don't know if they are eligible to even apply. They get a compo pick, though, when they lose Lynch, won't they? If they lose yeah, Lynch, yeah. they will. It they sounds will. like more and more likely, uh, even when I was watching the... That'd be disappointing, yeah. to be honest, um, like, yeah, from well, my perspective. He's the captain, um, and he's like yeah. he, he's probably, again, like that marquee player for He'll probably Gold join Coast. Richmond, too, which I'd is... I'd be pretty... Hawks, even now that they're... At, Cyril's yeah, retired, they've Rich, got money I think now. Richmond, Collingwood and Hawks are the three clubs getting thrown about all They're pretty afraid, dangerous yeah. clubs already. You wouldn't want any of them to get an extra. I think free thing. agency is shit. It's a bit of a joke. I it's think kind it's a shit of, house. I just don't think... Um, I just don't understand why they thought that this wasn't going to happen. Do you know what I mean? They were just relying on players to... They thought they would To be more to... loyal and stay with their worst clubs... But why, why would you do that as a player? People play for premierships and for money. They, if, if a better club can offer you more money and the chance for a premiership, you would be crazy to turn that down. I don't think Tom Lynch will make more money at the new club, though. No, I not think necessarily Tom, Tom Lynch, but that has happened with a lot of the free agents. Yeah, I think the, the logic behind it was that if a player is offered more from a good team will be offered more from a crap team to switch and that will equalise the competition but as you say it's just gone mm. completely the opposite direction Yeah, players are leaving their clubs these clubs are not getting fairly compensated for losing that player and they they need to look at like because the NBA's free agency model like you, you see the similar thing players got joining up and going to good teams but they need to have like They've got these things called bird rights where the team that drafts the person, if you stay on that team for three years, you've got bird rights, so you can go over the cap to keep them. I don't no. think that's a thing in the AFL. No, it's not. That could be a thing where like Gold Coast could go over the cap to pay Tom Lynch more just so he sticks around. And ma- also maximising the size of the contract seems to be a big thing in the NBA where the max contract you can get is 35% of a team's cap, and that's if you're a 10-year vet or whatever. Yeah. So- stuff like that where it's like there's a cap on how much you can pay a guy. Okay. So like it helped, even though that more bounces out from the middle guys to get yeah. paid. The logic behind it is, um, it was is I think it might have been driven by the players' association to allow more freedom between yeah, between no. clubs. But I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think back then you couldn't trade future draft picks. You couldn't. That yeah. was only a thing in the past couple of years. I remember yeah. that in itself yeah. has been a huge thing in yeah. AU because yeah. now you play, uh, clubs can play uh, trade both their first round picks for two elite players. You couldn't do that before. Yeah, I I think. Free agency is just redundant, and all it does is serve the, the best teams and and shit all over the crap teams. To be honest, another one that the NBA has that could be handy is restricted. For, well, we do have restricted free yeah. agency in AFL, but is it to the extent where literally any club does it and Gold Coast can match, and he yeah. has to stay in Gold Coast? He doesn't have to stay, but he has, it forces a trade. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So then you'd make him stay or. Actually, that's it's interesting though. That's, is we, he unrestricted? I think he might be restricted. It's yeah, interesting though. Restricted. Free agency yeah. and um, trading future draft picks has really caused the player for player trade to pretty much die in the That's ass. true. Yeah, you don't, you yeah. never see that anymore. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, you don't say play. Yeah, definitely not. Like straight swap like such yeah. and such for such and such. It's, I guess it's harder to subjectively uh, assess which two players are equal when yeah. you could. it's easier to do it with draft picks for some reason. This know. is hippie, hi, pretty hypocritical because I just said Carlton should get shouldn't get a priority pick because it's unfair, but I almost feel like Gold Coast should have a priority pick for a, the, a Queensland player in the draft. My, they do already have an academy, so they 
they they get rights to like half the queens. Yeah. Do you mean sure. where they can use that pick without having to bid with their other picks? Is that sort yeah, of yeah. you're going with that? Okay. But well, something's got to be done yeah. because where they you could I, even just sort of say they get the academy kids without like bidding. They just get them maybe. I think if, if the AFL hadn't way. hadn't helped Gold Coast so much, they'd be very close to being dead right now. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. They do have a good f- uh, a couple of Queensland academy players. Yeah. It's funny, I forgot, they traded Zorko. They used to have Zorko as an academy player and they traded him for this one. Yeah, imagine that. I mean, they have lost a lot of talent, Um, haven't they? They lost pretty much half of the list that they started with. They've completely rebuilt. Yeah. 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 They've done a rebuild already. Yeah. They've done the opposite of what G-dubs have, pretty much, in terms of those two start-out teams. Yeah. But just getting back to Carlton for a minute... How do we assess where they are? Do you, 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 you clearly don't think they. I don't think they're such a bad far, situation. I don't think they're as far away from being competitive as what other people think. I don't think no. they're a basket case. Really? No, okay. I don't. I feel like I I'm think, starting to get that way. I think the, I think they're just out really out of form, and I think because we've seen them beat and when they play kids. their best footy, they can be competitive. And their kids, the their confidence class, is beaten up at this point. Their kids, they. Confidence to be shattered yeah, at this point. They, they almost That's beat. True. They almost beat West Coast. They almost beat Richmond. They still only have one win for the year, though. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I don't think it's as far away as what people think. But I do understand that it is. They need to do boring. something to get confidence back into those kids. Because at the start of the year, you guys know I was pretty high on them. Like I had them highest on our predicted yeah. ladders. I thought they'd be a really good team in two to three years, but. Now I'm starting to back off on that a fair bit. I'd say like they've still got the young talent. They just need to, like I said, get the confidence in them. Even I was watching like bringing like the generic bring an old guy in like Hodge or whatever for Brisbane something. It's like that. just going to be like the Crips and Kerno show. I feel like in relying on those two too too heavily. I think them re-signing this year is a good sign for Brendan Bolton because I think them committing to contracts is a good sign that the Bolton hasn't lost the players. Yeah. They've obviously got faith in the regime. Because I was saying I'm not as high on Bolton <laughs> as I was at the start of the year. Bolton was one of the factors where I thought they'd be good. because I thought I like good. Bolton still. It's hard I to I still assess. like him, but I don't like him as much. I think so. he's the right type of person to be there, actually. I think he's a real players coach. He's probably a good rebuilding coach. He's not necessarily uh, your most tactical yeah. um, coach, but I think he is a really, really good man manager. He just, it just and, hasn't um, achieved anything, unfortunately. But a lot no. of that is down to his putrid list. I think, say, and you I can't d- blame I him. I don't see, I don't see what's what sacking him and bringing some other assistant coach, which is what will happen. Yeah. Some assistant coach from Hawks or Port Adelaide or wherever will come in and do the job. I think you're better off just sticking with for now. No, um, Ross Lyon when Dockers can him in the next year or two. <laughs> uh, back to Melbourne. <laughs> I'd be tempted to poach Sam Mitchell or shoot if I was Carlton. I think he's going to be the, uh, a real genius yeah. coach in the future. I would offer I would offer a lot of money at someone like Paul Ruse. I mean, I know he, he said he's retired it. and it sounds like he's done, but yeah, I think I'd... Um, but no, I would, I'd hang on to Brendan for now. And hey. he's only been there for two years now or three? Three, I think. I think he took over in twenty fifteen. Yeah, three. I think uh, generally maybe, not, maybe twenty sixteen. Generally, I'm not really a fan of turning coaches over. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I think, I think give him a little another year or two. Yeah. And then recess. But the Paul Rose point actually, because as I said before, I was watching on the couch before you guys came, and they actually asked Paul Rose what he would do if he got the keys to Carlton, like he did with Melbourne, how he brought them back to relevance. And he sort of he even said he'd trade that pick one and try and bring in a combination of picks and. Established guys Bring in a Tom Bug And a uh, Yeah That was Wayne Frost. Carey's Because even did that, He did that with Dom Tyson When he first took over Melbourne He flipped that pick two For like Dom Tyson And some other pieces Or something wasn't it Yeah Or something like that Is that a good he mentioned Good deal I, though Looking back on ret- With retrospect You can understand yeah. why he did Yeah it, but, I guess uh, not yeah. But yeah. look where they are now like Dom though, Tyson wasn't right At the time wasn't he Like he came over he's and okay. a Like a he's a He's a good 20 second sort of player He's out of favour now I think he was alright During the rebuild Yeah he even also said, like, because the amount of top 10 picks Carlton have had over the past years, they keep stuffing it up. Like, Idiocy's doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah, he, that's, that's true. the point he made, and that's what they keep doing. They keep just, they got to try something different, even if it involves trading the pick. What would you do? Would you trade the pick? What would you. If I could get the right trade, I'd look to trade it, but only if I got the right trade. Like, I wouldn't trade it for something I didn't feel was 
going to help the team. Like, even if you feel like the other team may have got the better pace, but if you think you're helping your team... Would you trade, trade it for, like, three high second rounders or, like, a, or, no, or three late first rounders? So, like, a 16, 17, 18? I'd probably want a late pick or two, like, late first pick, I mean, and then maybe a bit more of an established, like, third year ish player that's okay. got a few runs on the board and looks like they'll pan out. Yep. I agree with that. I think they need to go established. Yeah. Or a combination of established player and another draft yeah. pick. Because I don't think yeah. they've completely got all the kids in they want. I don't think they have the yeah. young midfield talent yet. Yeah. You've got Cripps, Dow, Kennedy to a lesser extent. Yeah. There's a few good um, Victorians in state, like yeah. third or fourth yeah. years. They could have a crack at Langdon for Freo. I think he'd be a good pick up for them. I would offer I would know, maybe not definitely, but one, they could offer pick one for Gaff. And that sounds silly because I'm an Eagles fan. But yeah. I, would you take I'll that? Oh, yeah, I'll hear you. What are you fan? thinking here? I would actually prefer Gaff, to be honest. Yeah. Because so considering where West Coast are in the, in the uh, premiership sort of stakes, they're obviously yeah. going to try and contend. Yeah. But obviously, I would take it if he was definitely going. And the yeah. thing is, with that pick one, like it's Luke Hoche just seems to be, from what I've seen, the best talent. Like If you don't particularly need that tall forward that which, pick's less valuable to you which they don't because you can trade up to a pick two if you want the top I'm not really sold on the whole Lukosius thing yet like that he's this once in a generation player they said the same thing about Tom I mean, Boyd like, I mean like I think it's too. just yeah. due to the fact that there's so much more coverage in, of players now than there was for, like even five years ago there's double the amount of coverage on like these young. Still, you heard the pump up for Boyd for years before he came in. Yeah, Boyd's still young. Though. Boyd yeah. was. I mean, all, all the evidence I think of Boyd being good was just because of the fact that he was like muscly and tall and athletic. He was playing VFL league at like sixteen and going pretty bloody well from what I remember. Yeah, I disagree respectfully. I th- I think Lakosha's is a gun, but I don't think. From Carlton's perspective, they should be prioritising that. They have their own retention issues. He's a South Australian boy. Yeah. They they are, if you break it down, they've actually retained almost as poorly as the Queensland Cubs in recent years for Carlton. They've they've like they've bled on quite a few players. Yeah. I would I would probably look at flipping that pick to Adelaide. Adelaide have like three or four first rounders. Remind yeah. me what what they got for Gibbs. Two first rounders. I want to say. See, I'm I'm not liking that that deal anymore. I th- you thought Carlton did well. I think at the time I thought um, thought they did all right, but now that now that they're in the position they are now, I think they Gibbs Gibbs would would be really good for them right now, to be honest. <laughs> but he didn't. He's, he, a he wanted to leave. he's a reliable player. Didn't want to be. Uh, he wanted to leave. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's that's true. Yeah. They put, they got the best deal they could get for him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but again, who, how do you know well, they couldn't so, have got an established player? What do you did they think have to about get the? Picks? No, I don't know that. Yeah, but yeah. it is it is harder to to talk um, an established player who doesn't necessarily want to leave into being part mm. of a package deal. You know, you, you, yeah. I mean, from an Adelaide perspective, they probably wouldn't necessarily. I'm I'm completely hypothesizing. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't know what happened. Yeah. But there are, there are problems when you go to a player that wants to stay in your club and say, hey, how would you feel about going to Carlton? That, oh no. Okay. See that. <laughs> see that's the reason that I wouldn't try and flip like Lockie Neal. At Fremantle, for like, yeah. a lot of people have talked about flipping um, a first rounder and Neil for like a pick one, or like a, not Neil. I would not. Our first rounder and Langdon for a pick one. I don't think. Yeah. I, I don't think personally it's good for club morale to flip yeah. players who want to be there. Yeah, I think you're asking for trouble. I don't think other players in the dressing room would really respect yeah. that because they they suddenly start thinking, oh, like the club can just ask me to move without me me even consenting to that. Um, yeah, I don't think that's that's a good move. Yep, uh, I agree. But still, if the player hasn't signed a contract and committed at the same time, it's like if you're not going to sign the contract and commit to the club. Sort of oh yeah, one hundred percent. If that player is happy to go, then yeah. by all means yeah. trade them. But if the like, what's if the player's contract like Pardon? at the present? You, what's his contract like? I think he's, he's out contract. of contract. Long term, at the end of the year, is Langdon. I think yeah. so. I didn't know that. Because if he's not signed for like, if he's only signed for like another year, maybe that. I think that's why all the chat was it. coming out about him. Yeah. Okay. Because him and Chair, they're both not that long term. Well, it but... sounds like Chair is going to re-sign. Yeah. Um, which is good news for Frio fans. Definitely. To be honest, I, as much as I like Langdon, I think six in Langdon for pick one and something else not a bad deal if he's mm. leaving. I, 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 I totally leaving, agree. Yeah. Don't talk him into leaving if he's not leaving. Yeah, but yeah. If he's leaving, you guys get 
uh, like a premium mm. key yeah. for 100% prospect. if he's leaving yeah. but it sounds like he doesn't want to leave at this stage it sounds yeah. like he's really happy fair enough fair enough but who knows like, I mean who knows what will happen well, well I was going to say quickly what do you guys think of the big conspiracy theory where it's like both McGovern's end up in Carlton where it's like pick one Adelaide for Mitch and a combination of I other things I can't remember who it was but one of the chip. teams got really massively chipped in that deal <laughs> I died, yeah. I, I remember it's too really hard, hard to remember. remember. Yeah. Because I, I know it was like Adelaide wins because they get the Lucocious. It was, I don't know. It was, Wasn't it Bulldogs got like <laughs> an early second rounder for Dalhouse or something? And I, oh, was something like, I, know, I wasn't talking about even that follow up specifically, just the pure McGovern just brother the movements. Idea. Not yeah. the follow up where they pull some gun midfielder out of their ass for a second round pick. Not that follow up stuff. But what, what is it with the McGoverns? And like, is, it's, is it just because they're young and tall? And uh, in, in that what that people think they're going to get people, traded. Yeah, just all well, the McGovern's time talking about how un, unrested they are at yeah, their current clubs. Uh, well, McGovern's out of contract and hasn't signed, so you can understand why there's speculation. Mitch McGovern, I have no idea if it's true, but everyone's saying that he wants to quit Adelaide. That, I think just it was, signed was the ex- Sam McClure that came out with that? Because he'd signed the extension yeah. and then all yeah. this camp stuff yeah, happened and so. apparently wants out now personally I think it's rubbish how yeah. bad was this camp that suddenly <laughs> yeah. suddenly half the Adelaide list if you believe some media yeah. want to leave the club surely surely it wasn't that bad yeah I don't know yeah. Yeah, it's, it sounds it's like really such a beat up like it's one of those ones that the media just will not yeah. let go of like we've been talking about this all year we mm-hmm. talked about this in pre-season yeah. why is it even still a story it's almost like it's like um the media like self fulfills the hype. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. Like one one um, one media outlet will talk about it, then another media outlet will attach onto that, and suddenly there's been this frenzy created over nothing. Chinese to... whispers. I think Adelaide yeah. handled it kind of poorly, to be honest. Though. I think they From probably they probably should have just come out at the start and just said, "This is what happened." Yeah. Let's move on. But the they... fact that they try to keep it in house, I think everyone's just trying to. Yeah, figure out exactly it, what yeah. happened. They they called their own press conference for it, like two yeah. thirty on a Saturday, and Brett Burton. But he still didn't even reveal that. He, much he about didn't, it. which is weird. He bottled yeah. it. The Brett Burton was the one who did that, and then yeah. they, I think it was uh, pa, um, Pike. Pike actually had to st- step in and be yeah. like, "Yeah, th- this is this is what happened." Like he yeah. overrode yeah. Burton because yeah. they were butchering it so badly. So yeah. I think I think it's a case of it looking worse than it really is. Mm. Yeah, I guess we can now talk about another rebuilding team, and. It's one that we talk about quite a lot off the air, but Brisbane Lions, I think I've been a big critic of them in the past. You have? <laughs> I have. Oh, okay. I'll rephrase that. I'm, I've not been a critic of the way they've handled things. I've just been a, I'm a skeptic. You just think they suck. Yeah. I do. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think I've been proving wrong just yet, but it does look like I probably will be. So I, I was very um, skeptical that they would ever get over their retention issues and and really sort of, you know, rise up the ladder the way they're kind of starting to yeah. now. I can understand the retention issues perspective from that. Yeah. I can definitely agree with you there. So, that, I mean, they've only won three in a row, which is still a good achievement yeah. for them. But what I feel like I'm starting to be proven wrong about is the way the, the youth are really starting to band together. I feel like there's a real brotherhood going on at Brisbane mm. between, like, McCluggage, Rayner, Berry... All these young guys, they seem to be very tight knit. Interesting statistic, actually, because I was what I've said a few times. I was watching like the last ten goals they kicked in the game the other day. The oldest person was twenty three, Louis Taylor, and that was all their young guys like McStay, Berry kicked one, Rayner kicked a couple, Hipwood had a few. Yeah, they it was all the young. Who ones. else? I can't remember everyone listed. <laughs> Berry, Rayner, McStay had multiple. I did know you say McCluggage? I think he McCluggage had one. Yeah, yeah, he did one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, I mean, they, I never thought that they didn't have talented kids at their club, but I am a firm believer that if you don't have good, mature players around those kids, they won't develop. But I've been really impressed with the, the rate they've improved. I, I actually can't believe it, to be honest. I've never seen a club with so many young players all lift the way they have. Like, look at yeah. Rayner. I know Rayner was the number one pick. Barry, I think, is the one who's impressed me the most. I liked, I, I've liked Barry a while, but yeah. I like my cluggage. I've... I think a lot of people wrote him off way too quickly because he wasn't like get go from yeah he definitely debut. did get rid off early but um know. I've I've actually I think he's really good quality on the ball McClough you tell like the way he moves with the ball I think he he had a lot of critics for being a bit of a seagull that that was that was the concern about him pre draft and I think I suspect that's why he slid from one to three but 
you know, you, you can have seagulls in your team if, yeah. if they're good ones, which he clearly is. Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. Hipwood, he looks like up it, there in top key forward prospects, and there's a few. Yeah, that's true. And he's up there, I'd say. I mean, we even it, had that hypothetical the other day off air where we were sort of like, which would you rather? I was like, Kerno, Brennan Cox, Hipwood, Hipwood. and Shacky was the other yeah, one, wasn't it? Yeah. With respect to Freeman, I, I do think Cox and Hipwood, sorry, um, Cox Kerno and, and Hipwood are uh, a, a level f- above. A fair Absolutely. bit above level Brennan above. Cox, yeah, even though definitely. I am a big Brennan Cox fan. I think Cox yeah. is a lot more of a, like a swing man. He's going to be like Utility. a swing man, like a Ben Reed sort of guy. Definitely a Reed type. Um, I think Brennan Cox and Oscar Allen are pretty comparable players, to be honest. I think they're both very talented. Yeah. And that's not fair. Mm. I know it just sounds like I'm just trying to bring my own club into the thing, uh, into the conversation, but I feel like they're actually really quite comparable players in the way that they're swing men. Oscar Allen's no slouch. He won the lap medal last year. I think yeah. Cox has kicked on like... 16 goals for the yeah. year now, which is pretty good. He's like, the third most out of any rising star behind Stevenson and Ronk. Yeah, so uh, and he's only played half the games yeah, as well. That's true. So. Yeah, no, he's, With, a, he's a very good player. Oscar Allen is the midfield project still a thing, or are they seems dead with, in the water yeah. to be honest. They yeah. they they did talk about it a bit when he was drafted, and certainly pre draft he used to play yeah. as a mid, but now it seems to be key forward or key back. <laughs> Wasn't he training with the midfield group a little bit early in the process? Yeah, but. Of, yeah, uh, doesn't cool. seem to be. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think you might be a bit too tall now. No, um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so Brisbane was the topic. But yeah. um, I, see, I saw, what, do you guys see the way um, they all put their jumpers on at the same time? Yeah. Before uh, Hawthorne? Yeah. I was really impressed to learn that Jared Berry was the one who initiated that. Yeah, I heard that was a Berry. He's like 19, 20, 20. years old. Yeah, he, he strikes me as a real leader. I'm a, I'm a big fan of his. He seems like a real yeah. good character too. Uh, bit of man love for an opposition player. Bit of fife about him, I'd say. Yeah. Like in terms of that build, not just because of the hair and everything, but the build. <laughs> the, like he is a big yeah. boy. I do. Bit um, of an aerobatic, pretty cute, acrobat. isn't he? Yeah. He he's been through some personal battles as well, and I I, I mean it it always kind of builds a narrative when someone's gone through personal stuff. But um, I always have a lot of respect for those kind of players right. who um, I think he lost his mother right before he was drafted, and then you know he's just some players don't. Yeah. You know, I guess the question would have been whether he would fulfill his potential after going through something like that. And, you know, yeah. he's just, yeah, I'm just really impressed. And not one to go, another one in that situation. Is he a Queensland boy? Um, no. Barry? Barry? No, he's Victorian. Yeah, so Victorian. that'd be a wanting to go home sort of push yeah. with all those circumstances. That'd be something True. you'd want to be closer to your family. His and, dad goes to every game and his dad lives in Victoria. So his dad flies up every second week to the yep. Gabba. Yeah. That's incredible, isn't yeah. it? That's yeah. damn impressive. Yep. And Barry's got a brother who might get drafted this year. I think you were right um, that you said, uh, talked about the brotherhood. Um, like, when I follow the uh, the players on social media, they seem super tight, especially all the young guys. Um, like, I think a lot of them even live together. Um, like, Mitch Robinson, mm. Keyes, Matheson, yeah. like all those guys. Matheson's another one. He's injured at the moment, isn't he? Yeah. He, it, yeah. He, so say he's another i got to say, he seems like a real... Idiot, but yeah. he. I think he's a good player. He's a good yeah, player, so but I, a bit of a galah for sure. Yeah, but I think he's like a funny idiot. Like, yeah, bit of a bit of a laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The cheeky. If you look at his interviews, sort of he's, dude, yeah. he's like a pretty funny guy. Bit of cheek about him. Yeah, exactly. The yeah. whole shotgun. Thing. I think <laughs> I think players and coaches are even as well are closer than they've ever been. I, I think it's because they're spending so much time together. I saw Paul Rules on uh, Paul Ruse on the couch say that it's like when you're a coach, it's like having 44 sons because you actually have to be quite invested in all yeah. of them. Your coach has to be invested Especially in the Especially when they're young players. Yeah, like you, if you're a rookie, pick 45 and playing for East Perth yeah. Resis or Peel Resis, your, players, your coach still needs to be just about as invested as you as he does yeah. in, in your, your top five players. Five. Yeah. And I think this kind of book, uh, we talked about Carlton, like uh, has Brendan Bolton lost the players and stuff? I think at Brisbane... We've seen how to do it right. Like the team's losing, but that uh, that's actually almost strengthened that's the bond, and that's made the, them say, oh, "We've got to get players in, just really culturally make them want to stay, form really good friendships." Yeah. And I think they've done that, and they're going to reap the wo- rewards because of that. Having said that, I don't think they're ever going to be. I still don't think they're ever going to be like a contending top team, but I think they will be a competitive team talking about Brisbane yeah yeah. okay I not not in the recent future anyway well the yeah. sorry yeah, I know the short term future short-term th- yeah maybe yeah. in the long term I think two years is like I think they'll play finals within two years yeah. I'm, a, I'm a convert now 
welcome. I'll, I'll put my head up welcome. and say <laughs> <laughs> I'll put my hand up and say I was wrongly sceptical. Um, okay. That's what I was going to say. Even early in the year when everyone was writing them off, they weren't that bad, other mm. than the Richmond game. I will admit the Richmond game was abhorrent, but other than that, all their losses were really close. If you look at percentage, they're like 12 13 from the percentage ladder. They're getting a lot from their best players. Zorko, Stefan Martin, and one guy I want to talk about is Dane Beams. Another yeah, guy Beams. Another yeah. guy who's gone through real adversity. He gave up the captaincy this year because his father passed away and he said football was what he shared with his dad. And the I think he was just a bit disenchanted. Like He kind of lost his yeah. love for the game for a little bit, as you can expect. Yeah. But the way he's turned around recently, he's, got, he's pushing all Australian midfield. He's yeah. so, such a good player. I've all, always um, said that about Dane Beams. Mm. Like, he's... Really, he's like an A grade mid, a hundred percent. When he's yeah. fit and firing, he's as he's good looking as any, any of the other mids. The last few times I've seen him on telly compared to years past, he's looking skinnier and cut. And mm. I think he's almost giving more to Brisbane at the moment as a leader. Now he's given up the captaincy, yeah. just the way he's playing. I know and it gives Zorka a chance to yeah. step up. I know well, at Collingwood he was rated like as high. As like the Pendlebury's, mm. the side swans. bottoms, any yeah. swans, any of those guys. I know he was rated as high, yeah. if not maybe a little bit higher yeah. than younger. some of those guys, which shows how how good how good a player he really is. He's a real all round player, isn't he? Super tough. Um, uses the ball well. Good leader. Like yeah, what's not to like really? That, they uh, they got a gem when he decided to come up to Brisbane. Lee no. Collingwood, because I think it was for personal issues. So yeah, because his family it was, it was for his dad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, but I mean, from a Brisbane perspective, that was just such a good coup for them. Yeah, for what and he's been able to bring. Bikey Heartland up on the Gold Coast. So I mean, that that would suit him and his <laughs> yeah. brother pretty well, I'd say. <laughs> uh, this is true. <laughs> um, big game for them on the weekend. They got the Crows uh-huh. uh, at the Gabba Saturday night. That's I'll, actually starting to shape I up. I think I'll tip them. That could be game of the round. I'm going to tip Adelaide by a goal because I actually think Adelaide have turned it around too. Yeah. Well, just looking toughy. at current form, they're both pretty good teams at the moment. But I would not be surprised either way. Are Adelaide still a realistic sniff at finals? Not realistic, yeah. but they have mathematically a chance. Okay, so mathematically rather than realistically. Don't the think... showdown's going to be huge in a few weeks. Yeah. Both of those clubs will be playing for their season. Yeah. Port Adelaide will make finals, but they're going to be playing for top. I don't yeah. know if I've seen like a grand final performance ruin a team. As much as it's ruined this, uh, Adelaide this team. Adelaide team. Uh, you could argue West Coast. Injuries. What about West Coast? Uh, no, no. I think the King is Port Adelaide. In 07, they obviously True. lost by 100 points. And then True. I think the next year they finished bottom two? True. Yeah. Bottom four. I, I think, think um, Lou getting flogged in a grand final definitely, definitely definitely is a massive deflation. I'm sure the players were thinking all off-season how far off Richmond they were. Mm. And then they have to listen to their theme song every two then minutes. Then they have, the have to go through the camp and they're just <laughs> like, yes, this. <laughs> yeah, West Coast, uh, well, they only fell to sixth, but there was a huge difference yeah. when they got Belch in the grand final. Maybe um, a bit of complacency at Adelaide as well. I think a lot of people were already saying, how, yeah, they'll be back. They did have their year. injury woes, though. Yeah, they have had a rough time. They did, they injury woes. It's, it's, it's almost like everything's gone too. wrong, hasn't yeah. it? Everything that could have gone wrong for they Adelaide They lost has two gone of their wrong. best, like 23 and under players in Lever and Cameron, who were probably two of their mm. best. Lost Matt Crouch They've for replaced half Lever. the year. Yeah. Brad Crouch for the full year. They've yeah. replaced Lever really well, though. They've yeah. got Tom Dodo. Yeah, Dodo's yeah. gone. He was yeah. rising and stuck. I think, well, Adelaide got two first rounders out of that. I think they made out really well from that deal from Jake yeah. Lever yeah, they've, yeah. Got, they've replaced uh, Dode who's maybe not quite as good but in terms of the role he plays he plays it yeah. almost as well and they get two first I can't rounds. remember yeah. who got one of the players said Dode's um, better than Lever but I think that was actually more was of tech. a shot yeah. at Lever yeah, it was tech. yeah I 100% think that's a shot yeah, yeah it was but was a good player shot. too yeah. Yeah. speaking of Dode yeah. rising star <laughs> extinct animals <laughs> Camp Town Rangers sing this song do day do day <laughs> Camp Town Rangers. Is, it, is what, that what it is? What, no, it's not. What I've always I, wondered. It's, no, it's Camp Town. It's come to, it's Camp, Camp, Camp Town Rangers. Rangers. Shut up! Don't ruin my joke. Camp Town. Go on run all night. Camp Town Rangers. Go on to run all day. Wager my money on the bell town. Make somebody bet on the bay. Camp Town Rangers. I just know. Don't. I just know the lyrics. It's Camp Town Rangers. Camp Town Rangers. Straight out of Camp Town. You you got halfway there. Anyway, Rising, Rising star. star contenders. 
a little hot now. For this oh, week no, or yeah. for the year? This year. Okay. Who, who do you think is the best? So we've seen the media right now is hot on comparing Stevenson and Ronk, which is fair because mm. they're probably they're, they're they're quite similar players, aren't they? Yeah, That's a fair roles. comparison, yeah, and their stats roles. are actually very similar. And we've had Stevenson's probably been better for the stretch, yeah, and Ronk's had two more. amazing games. Ronk has a few more good games between here and the end of the season. He's right in it, but at the moment it's probably Stevenson and Dodo. Yeah, I'd go with Stevenson at the minute. Yeah. I think he's put in a lot of. Good performances. He's had. He's kicked like twenty five goals. Yeah, he's and I think he's maybe kicked three plus goals in maybe four or five yeah. of those games. So yeah. I'm I'm going to go with him at the minute. But I think um, everyone was really talking down this draft year, and I think so far the draft year has really proved them wrong, especially the top ten. Top ten yeah. was the quickest ever all debut. Yeah, that's true. What what my theory on that is? Well, I think the criticism on the draft was that they weren't. Uh, they, they lacked the elite talent yeah. and I still think that could be true mm. but it looks as though more than them more than um, more than like oh sorry the majority of them are at least going to make it they do like yeah. quality players but whether that top five is going to produce that top elite talent it remains to be seen I mean I think Rainer could yeah. be on that track um, from the top five possibly Chera yeah I like Chera I think Chera's up there LDU has turned it around in recent recent weeks. He's been a bit mm-hmm. underwhelming this year. I he think had a Dow, good game. Dow's been pretty handy as well at Carlton. Yeah, even he, Brayshaw is a tackling machine. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. I think you're going to see. I think you might be right. I think out of that top ten, we're not going to see like in that five. There's no Dusty five Martin, in there. but I think we will see a lot of like yeah. really good, like Sam Mitchell, like as good as him sort of Oof, guys. You'd be doing well to get a Sam Mitchell. Yeah. Not ne- not saying that yeah. um, that's Brayshaw yeah. or Chera, but. I think a lot of those top 10 guys will be really good players. I think Caulfield, Hunter Clark. Um, I think Chera will be the second best mid out of the top 10, barring Rayner. Rayner. Okay. I think Rayner <coughs> is special. He's another one I think he might be a boomer, uh, boom, boom, bolter, <laughs> a bolter for Rising Star. Rainer, yeah, 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 he's had a few good games if recently. He, if he can put it together at the end of the season, I could see him coming a few second more or third. Yeah. Yep. Um, while we're on the topic of contenders, what about the Brownlow medal? That, that is one topic starting to build up a little bit. Now we're getting towards yeah. the end of the season. It's almost Not like a... Not Garth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay cool. um, I was... No, I was going to say, it's, it's a bit of a Bradbury year. We've seen uh, Dusty and, Fy- and uh, Danger not really hitting their straps this yeah. year. And Fife's obviously out of contention. So yeah. we've got... Uh, it's a pretty open race this year. I, I actually put money about a couple of months ago on Max Gorn. I'm not going to lie. He was paying twelve to one at the time, and I chucked a cheeky ten on him. Nothing. I like I like Gaff actually at the minute. I think West Coast, like West Coast, West Coast. Brandon had a, and a Yo lot of, and stuff will pinch votes. Yeah, but West Coast have had a lot of good wins, so I think in like a lot of their game or a lot of their games, um, I think that like they'll get maybe the three two one, mm. or maybe one of the oppositions will get just the one vote because of the amount of one by. And even yeah. the games have lost. I think their maximum loss is what. 20 points something like that testing me here uh, I think we lost by 29 in round 1 29 okay so I mean that's yeah. and that's close close enough a margin that if someone has a really good game for West Coast they'll they still give them a point they'd still they? get one or two votes I, I think, still think, I think there's a lot of vote steals like Darling early in this season he could be a brown load later after like round 6 or whatever Darling could be right history here. shows they just don't award them to key forwards uh, not that unless you're Buddy Franklin mm. yeah um I think Redden recently would have pinched a few votes. Yeah. I think he would have got three votes on the weekend, Redden. I still don't think he's anywhere near his eye-catching. And I think There's in gap, recent no. years, they've definitely kind of moved a little bit away from those just like high stat numbers, mm. which I think he slightly more leans toward that sort of player. But like, like saying, he's had a great year. Um, Tom Mitchell is another one yeah, who, who you just like, the kind of player you just described, a yeah. real stat getter rather yeah. than... Impactful. Yeah. He's the best stat getter of all time. <laughs> yeah, he's already. Yeah, he's um, just about accumulator. You, he Surely will, he will, he will be up there. Three vote games. He will be up yeah. there. Um, but Sean Higgins is another one. Yeah, he's a, he's a fancy, particularly in the Victorian media. Higgins is a big. I think you're right. I think it'll like I'm out of those favourites. I like Gaff, but I think there's. I th- I'm thinking probably that it's going to be like a bit of an outlier. 
Higgins, they're starting to lose a few games now, North. I don't think they're going to make the finals. Mm. I think they're... Yeah, the run home's not that great. I think they're going to miss out and they're probably going to end up winning as many as they've lost without having a look... without having the ladder in front of me. Uh, what about Brody Gundy? We talked about Rux earlier. Collingwood have won a lot of games now and he's been very dominant in most of those games. So I yeah. think he could be a little bit of a... A little Smoky. bit of a dark horse, yeah. You'd have to side s- bottoms had a, uh, side, side bottom died in the uh, he's died a lot. He's died in the bottom <laughs> in the past <laughs> since the bye probably. But he's yeah, that was a terrible bottom. pun. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> it's not a pun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sort of it is a pun. Yes. Died in the side bottom. Oh yeah. my god, I yeah, didn't even. Was that was too subtle for me. <laughs> but yeah, he's it's died since the yeah. Mm. If it was first pre bye he was really he's died in the bottom. But even then, he's stolen votes in the first half of the season. It's probably the yeah. side point. Also. Jesse, you've died in the bottom quite a lot. <laughs> I'm going to let that hang like the bad fart it was. Um, Pat Speaking Cripps. of dying in the bottom. Um. Pat Cripps. What do we think about his chances? He's been pretty awesome this year. he probably have a lot of two-vote games. Yeah, but they, 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 they haven't won enough. They haven't won enough. Exactly. Although, I think he's a great player. Well, to Ablett were fun with it Gold Coast, to be fair. But I don't think... Yeah, but Cripps yeah. isn't Ablett, is yeah, he? Yeah, he's not. He's yeah. not, exactly. But I do think he's, he's top five material, regardless of, um, of that. Yeah. Even, because you know how that... Because the Fox footy had the player takeover round last round where the players did all the shows and stuff. Yeah. Like, every time when the players asked who's best, they're all like, we're trying to catch up to Gaz. That's what they're all like. What he's about Oliver Hard. from Melbourne? See, they've won quite a lot of games now. He's had a lot of pretty outstanding games. Yeah. Again, they're probably a little bit similar to West Coast. They'd share it around a bit. Yeah, like Brayshaw think. pinch votes, Gorn will pinch votes. Yeah. Viney, when he was playing. And he's, he's only really played good. like one game, hasn't he? He's played a couple, a few, yeah. hasn't he? But played pretty well. Yeah. I think he's out again, isn't he? He's out again. Yeah. Yeah, but he's played probably four or five, I think, where he probably pin, could If pinch you were going to go in a boxing match against Busher, against Viney or Shannon Hearn, who would you rather fight? Ooh. I feel like Hearn's a lot stronger, but Viney's just like... I'll say there's Viney's something about him that's just scary. scary. Yeah. <laughs> and I was going to say, Shit, Viney's probably got more to lose because Hearn's got a rough head. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> I'd, no, I'd rather fight Viney. It's oh, a tough I don't know. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Viney's got more to lose. So Viney's crazy, but I reckon Hearn... Hearn, Hearn just, would hurt. Hearn hurts people when he doesn't I feel like though he's try. a big softy. Like, he would kind of... He once hits he, people, though. Once he knocked you down, I think he would, like, kind of leave it, whereas I feel like... <laughs> Once you got Viney worked out, like he would just end you. I don't know. It's a tough one. I wouldn't want to get in a street fight with Viney. Is that what you mean? All right, Viney yeah. or Bo Waters. <laughs> I'd rather fight Viney than yeah, Bo, Waters. Bo, Bo Waters. Yeah, because Bo Waters seems like a psychopath. You're saying skids. <laughs> he ate a goldfish. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you have to be like messed up to do that. Seems like a good bloke though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. But All I right, would boys. not want to mess with him. Final minute of the podcast or so. Unless we want to keep going. So I can't think of anything else we particularly got to cover. What's your grand final tip? Ooh, I'm going to need a little bit to formulate that one. Okay, we don't have that much time. What's Richmond? yours, Jesse? I'll start us off. I think Richmond and Sydney. Oh, first. I knew you would do that. Yeah, because I told you the other day. <laughs> and oh, because, the and tip because didn't change from a, yesterday. And because you're a negative Eagles fan. You've got to be on the Eagles... I don't think it's a negative Eagles thing to not necessarily think we'll win I the think grand Eagles, final. I think Eagles win the grand final or be in it? Be in the grand final. I, I don't think, think it's being overly negative. I think Eagles I think are the, the best team this really? year. 100% best team this year. Interesting. And jo- Richmond haven't won away from Richmond, not for that matters. Grand <laughs> final yeah. day. Yeah, I don't think it matters. I think uh, finals, it'll be, yeah, Richmond, West, West Coast. Coast. Okay. And if think, that does happen, I think we're a decent chance to win. I don't think the MCG is going to be a problem. And I was going to say Richmond, I think, will be in it. Yeah. Because they'll just be in too good a ladder position. And yeah. So Richmond Fremantle, right. really? Okay. Oh, mate. Yeah, Fremantle are going to somehow. Richmond Brisbane. Oh, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Richmond Carlton. First game of the year, we're going to end with the same. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, ooh. It was a good one. Yeah, West Coast or probably Sydney would be the other one, probably, I guess. Okay. Taking both your picks there. Oh, right. that. So uh, I think Collingwood is still a smoky. I think they've got the talent to get there. Especially if Trelaw can come back. I think Collingwood's got a lot like of talent, but I still... I just wouldn't fancy them in, like, a big MCG game against Richmond in, like, a in like a semi-final or something. Yeah. 
I think Richmond would have the experience. I mean, a lot of it depends who finishes where. Yeah. If West Coast finish second and can get the home final, I think they're going to be very hard to beat. Having said that, I think if West Coast finish third and and have to play Collingwood or Richmond at the G, then that's a that's obviously a lot tougher of an ask. It is, yeah. yeah. That's true. I mean, Richmond and Collingwood, um, they'll, they'll like almost sell out the MCG um, in, You'd a, almost, in a if final. They, if they played in a prelim, they'd probably get more than a Richmond West Coast grand final. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you'd probably you'd sell uh, it out there. Yeah, I think... Well, Richmond's got the most members by a landslide. Yeah, Collingwood's and up there, obviously. West Coast Collingwood and West too. Coast, so maybe two and three, almost. I think Adelaide's second, eh? Okay. Yeah, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. Won't be for long. Not after this year. <laughs> That's right. All right, boys. Good party. Lovely.